<laughs> and we are live. Um, hello, everybody. We are already rolling. Um, but my name is Priya. And um, first of all, thank you so much for joining Cinejoy this year, 2021. We are super excited to have you all here. Um, and a very warm thank you. And I'm very excited. Um, I was just telling these folks, I just watched Summertime today and it is fresh in my mind. I'm super psyched to have um, all these amazing folks here for this Q&A. <laughs> so we have got today Paulina Acuna Gonzalez. Thank you so much for being here. Um, the director, Carlos Lopez Estrada. Thank you for joining us. And we've got the wonderful Tyrus Winter. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> and Mila Kuda, thank you so much for joining us today too. Hello. Um, all Gordon, right, well. Gordon just show up, Priya. Gordon, Gordon, yeah. and we have Gordon Ip, and he's just dropping in fresh and ready. Gordon, thank you so much for being here. It is nice to have you. And it's, I'm digging uh, the shell. We're very happy to be here. Um, We've done a few Q and A's, but they've always been pre-recorded. So the the energy of doing this live is is new for us. Oh my gosh! So there's a level of unparalleled excitement coming with this, huh? <laughs> well, let's dive in. Um, so I know we were chatting a little bit earlier. I really enjoyed the film. Um, I felt like for me it was a breath of fresh air, and I literally couldn't stop watching and, and I really mean like every second I just was glued to the screen and the music and the voice and the sound um so my first question for um all of you if each of you could take a little bit um to answer is kind of uh I'm interested in the beginning so where were you in your life when the opportunity for this film came up how did that opportunity come up and what kind of was that initial spark that inspired you where you were like, I want to work on this? Um, and we'll go left to right here. Actually, we'll start with Carlos. Let's start with Carlos. Um, I was in my life, I was in an interesting place. I just finished my first movie called Blind Spotting. And I was sort of like trying to figure out what uh, that big question that I think lots of filmmakers have of just saying like now what um, and blind spotting was a very personal piece it was it was um, written and and produced by David and Rafa and they drew for a lot from a lot of personal experiences um, but it became like a real passion project so I just knew that whatever I, I signed on to do next I needed to care for just as much if, if not more uh, and I just wasn't sure what I had read some scripts. I, I, I was sort of like in that strange place where I was just hoping that something miraculous would happen. And it did. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I got invited to a spoken word um, showcase that featured these four individuals and then like 20 or so more uh, young poets from LA and just like your, you described your experience in the watching the movie, that was my experience watching um, them perform. I it was so refreshing, it was so inspiring, and I just didn't want it to end. And I remember just walking out of that showcase, just uh, feeling reinvigorated, and um, that's really the seed that that started summertime. I just, I just wanted to find a way to share with other people that experience that I had in that showcase. Um, because it was just so, so uh, profound. And that's really how it all began. Okay, I can't stop smiling. That's awesome. <laughs> um, Paulina, um, how did, how did Carlos approach, approach you um, after that spoken word event? Where were you in your life when you found yourself there and the opportunity for this film came up? Um, I kind of came through it. Um because um my the head of get lit diane luby lane she um introduced me to carlos and um she helped me actually get involved with get lit the poetry program that um, a lot of us come from and i was like senior in high school like super nervous about like being a performer and writer and like getting my get, dipping my toes into that whole world and um, so like being, being 
And so like um, Diane asked me just like, hey, our friend Carlos here is making, wants to make a movie. Would you like to be in it? And I'm just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so it was just like complete like nervous excitement just the whole the whole way. So that's how I got a, a part of it. Awesome. There were there were a lot of really memorable moments, but I will never forget Paulina's face when she first saw that dance being performed. I I that 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 made everything worth it. Just like she was like so happy and so blown away and just like tears and it was just beautiful. Sorry, I didn't mean to get in the way. No, oh, no. <laughs> Thank you. I love these little tidbits. Let's just keep hearing them. They're great. Um Tyrus, where were you in your life when <laughs> when the opportunity for this film came up and what was that initial kind of inspiration for you to, to join it? Um, I was getting into an Uber, um, holding a Starbucks drink. I'm just kidding. Um, no. <laughs> but I had recently just like won like a poetry competition and Carlos was actually the judge of that poetry competition. He was like, your performance was amazing. And he called me while I was getting in said Uber, so full circle. Um, and oh, it was an Uber. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it was an Uber. Wait, no, Lyft. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Uber? Nobody said Uber. Uh, no. Right, right. We'll, uh, we'll edit that out, even though Lyft. this is live. <laughs> Lyft gave us a, a very uh, a very kind contribution to produce the movie. Uh, so you know we we cannot we cannot uh, openly support the competitor. Yeah, we only take Lyft's household. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I was getting into my Lyft and Carlos was like, um, he called me and initially I was like kind of nervous because I had um, I would say coming from like my background of like growing up in the desert, um, opportunities of Hollywood of like being this form of representation for my likeness don't come like out of left field, come out of like a phone call in Where your everyday you life. Where I grew up in Palmdale. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the desert. Do you know? Do you know? Do you, know? you have to know to know. Yeah. <laughs> it's the middle of nowhere. Um, it's not much to do out there besides like go to Walmart and Target. So yeah, so it was really like astonishing to me that I was able to just do my poetry, just live um, my most authentic and be recognized for that. So yeah, that's how I got into La Movie, La Summertime, sponsored by Lyft. <laughs> <laughs> well, that must have felt amazing. Um, Mila, what about you? I was on my gap year and I was currently teaching as a teaching artist at Get Lit when the whole opportunity came knocking and something that I hadn't thought about until like right now when you asked this question is that I remember initially being really unsure what I wanted to do with my gap year. I was like looking at different writing workshops and things like all over the country that I was like interested in doing. Um, and so at first it was like, yes, I'm interested in doing this movie, but I don't know like how involved I can be. And that was like the first conversation, which I think is funny only because my role in the film ended up evolving into being um, the poetry supervisor and editor. So I worked like individually with all the poets to, to workshop their scenes and bring it to life. And so I was, summertime just like became my whole life, my whole summer. And it was honestly the most beautiful summer. And I'm so glad that it was, you know, the last summer before the pandemic, right? I get to look back and reminisce and really think about how magical it was. Um, so yeah. Ah. Awesome. What a, what a great way to, to kind of end normal life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Gordon, um, what about for you? Where were you at when the opportunity for this film came up and what inspired you to want to wanna join? Yeah, thank you, Priya. And hi, everybody, by the way. Um, my friends, I love you so much. It's so nice to see your faces. And also, it's great to meet you. Um, yeah. Um, well, I, I had just finished college. I went to college in um, Omaha, Nebraska. Um, I went there on a speech and debate scholarship. And so I was doing stuff out there. I came back and I had just started kind of doing, I, I was getting my feet into the workforce after, you know, post-college life. And um, that's kind of where this opportunity met me. Um, I think I, I don't think I had met Carlos. I think I'd met Carlos maybe like once or twice, maybe just like once before that big showcase that we had together and getting a, um, 
like a whiff of his energy was like obviously intoxicating as like just look at this man he's amazing um but also uh after that going like wait this man directed blind spotting and having to like you know register all of that magic that he produces it was just an incredible experience um and so the workforce thing is that definitely um i'll say i i wasn't at the i wasn't at the time working at a fast food place but you know going from college into the workforce was a you were not working at smiley's <laughs> <laughs> um did we get a sponsorship from them no Wait, no 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 i wasn't working on smiley's <laughs> If they did, then yes, you were. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. If, if, if this is recorded and y'all are watching in 2022 and we did end up getting the, 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 the sponsorship after the fact, then yes, I was working for somebody the whole time, of course, of course. <laughs> By the way, I was a fellow speech and debater too. So speech and debate represent. Let's go. All yes, right. Uh, okay. <laughs> Out here speaking about topics. Yes. Oh, I know. <laughs> Um, so Mila actually touched on the next question I wanted to ask, which is about the creative process for this film. And this is something that I'm just dying to know more about is, you know, obviously it's a different format from your traditional film. It's one cohesive narrative, but many sub narratives, many amazing, beautiful, poetic pieces. So I'm curious about how the shaping of that narrative look like? Was there kind of a, a loose overarching script in the beginning? And then you, each of you, I see Mila kind of smiling and, and each of you kind of, you know, workshop your individual pieces or did the overarching narrative kind of organically shape um, alongside the individual creative pieces? So whoever wants to take that on. I mean, I can tell you just very quick overview and then I'm sure each of these lovely people can give their own shade to it. Um, and I wish there was sort of like a clean, clear answer to this, but there isn't. It was just <laughs> a giant mess, uh, a beautiful mess. Yeah. But we we essentially started working on the movie with no script. We, uh, the, the Los Angeles Media Fund, who very, very graciously uh, agreed to fund our project, funded it just on a conversation. Uh, then they came to this, this show where Tyrus performed, the one that uh, he and his team won. It was a, a, a classic slam show. Um, and they just fell in love. And But because all of them were leaving, like Paulina was leaving to college, like it's just this group of people, at, at once the summer ended, just like dispersed in a, a million different directions. We said, look, if we want to do this, it has to happen this summer. Uh, so this. Oh my gosh! In the name of summertime, sorry, yeah, all just clicking it, for no, me it, live. Okay. It really. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of layers to it. Um, wow. So it needed to happen in the summer, uh, and the the whole point of the movie was that it would be written and starring uh, the poets, and that they would be in charge of their scenes and their little tidbits. So we eventually brought. Uh, a playwright to help us sort of like structure the whole thing but we started with nothing and and essentially each of them said look this is a poem that I love that I would love to feature or I don't have a poem yet but this is an idea that I would like to explore um, and then from there on it was very different conversation with each of them some of them uh, was quick some of them took some time some of them changed their poetry some of them like Tyrus we kept shooting and shoot like her cell phone um poem that we did last mm -hmm. we we filmed that that was not scripted we filmed it like once we were in post-production uh we were just like i think we we need a second piece to your story tyrus yeah. and then we shot it during the day one day they were like wait never mind i think we want it a little bit later in the movie let's shoot it at sunset and we shot it again at sunset and by the way there's like a very deeply uh intimate uh performance that he had to give so shot it at sunset and then like two weeks before we were submitting it to Sundance, I was like, Tyrus, so sorry to do this to you. I think it's going to be almost at the end of the movie. We need to shoot it again at night. <laughs> uh, so he, he, he just went with his phone to downtown and then uh, did it there a few times that, you know, it's gorgeous. But anyway, sorry. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't know if you all have any particular process insights. Oh my gosh. Tyrus is such a trooper. Uh, all of them for 
Yeah. <laughs> such different reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mila, I know that you have mentioned, started mentioning the creative process a little bit. Um, did you want to add any thoughts to that? What was that like for you? Since yeah, you were kind I mean, of workshopping. Yeah. It was really cool. And I think mostly because like the nature of Get Lit, the poetry organization that was like part of the summertime, obviously a huge part of it, where we all come from, we were already friends, most of us, we all knew each other. So it was really just like getting to work with friends and being like, what's your vision? How can we bring it to life? Mm -hmm. um, but I do think that there is an inherent chaos in, you know, trying to tell all of our stories. And I think the thing that really came through is that a lot of us decided to funnel our stories into a certain place. Um, and so there were certain corners of Los Angeles that we wanted to showcase. And I think that that was something that really made it have a more cohesive vibe overall. But I love the chaos of it. I think it's really true to just the poetic nature of the film, the breath of fresh air that you're talking about is I think because we're doing so much and it was so ambitious to do that in a summertime without a script. Um, and I think that that's what makes it so fun and so authentic, but that's all I really had to add. I was smiling earlier because I was just like, oh, the chaos. We were writing dialogue on set, um, reshooting things all the time. I mean, it was beautiful and really, really risky and wild. That is amazing. And it kind of mimics living in a city like Los Angeles a little bit, which is interesting. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Um, and another thing that I would just love to hear about is obviously you all, except for probably including Carlos, are poets. Um, and, um, but you all also acted clearly um, and it turned out so beautifully. Um, so I'm curious about what that process was like, you know, combining and joining poetry with acting were there any challenges there? What is that like for you? Um, and Paulina, if you would love to speak on that, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, hmm. Well, I feel like with the kind of poetry we do, slam poetry, like, man, like, it's like a specific kind of performance where you go all out. It is a theatrical kind of performance. And so like translating that onto film, like you can go like the that route and just go full out and it's still awesome. Or like there are some times where like in a film medium, you kind of dial back the dial back the performance to just really get to the close intimacy. And so like that was a balancing tightrope that I had to, um, I was constantly thinking about when I was um, acting in this. Yeah. Mm. And what about Tyrus and Gordon? What was that process like for you kind of balancing those two worlds of poetry and acting? I think it was really, um, I really liked the process because it really helped me just see my poetry in new avenues because I was so used to performing it in one way and being very, as Paulina said, like theatrical and then like my whole exit and being like, oh, deuces out, bye. But then with acting, I have to say deuces every time. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was really interesting to just see all the angles that I could represent my work. So yeah. Amazing. And um, what about for you, Gordon? Thank you, Priya. Yes. Um, I think, do, I mean, yourself knowing speech and debate and also the world of slam poetry, a lot of stuff can feel um, like there was a lot of I think I come from a world where a lot of that performance has a lot of restrictive blocking on it. And I think where I found the most freedom was actually on set with Carlos and getting to, uh, there was this one moment where I think on the very last take that we did, um, I, started, I was doing my poem, I went through the entire thing. And at the end of it, um, right before I had done, we started that take, I, I started meditating to myself a little bit. And I, it was like really late in the night. I remember, I don't remember if we had like moved into the AM section of the night yet, but it was like, it was getting late. <laughs> Everyone on set was tired, but like keeping the energy up. So I like started, I meditated for a moment, um, just standing there in the, like in the middle of the set and like something came out within me at the end of my poem where I just started freestyling poetry. And I just started speaking stream of thought consciousness from like whatever well is inside all of us, each of us. And so I speak to, I speak to that to say that um, I think it was one of the most freeing experiences because it taught me that it's not when we master every dance move that you know, we, we, we reach or ascend to like a new 
level of performance or, or truth or whatever it is that it might be. It's when you learn those things, um, you know, you get those rules, those moves, and then, and then use them in like, while being present in the moment, you know, like though that, that was like mm. the truly transcending experience. For like me. doing choreography versus freestyling. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Exactly. And how the two like love and meet each other in the middle. It was, it was a wonderful experience. Oh, fantastic. Um, a, a sense that I'm getting is that this film was just almost like a space for you all to be your most authentic selves and to bring that out and to do so with this uninhibited freedom. Um, Carlos, what, what did that feel like? Kind of, you know, creating that space as a director throughout the process. How does uh, that feel now? I mean, seeing the finished work and hearing all of these lovely people you know, talking about, you know, sharing like this authenticity that came there, out. There's two, there's two sides to that answer. One side is how it feels now, which is just like the most incredible feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, at the moment, it was absolutely terrifying. And I <laughs> just, just like the scariest thing I've ever done, just because like everything we do in film, you're trained to sort of like think that you're at your highest level. You're like, you're doing your best work when you're in total control and you have like a crystal clear vision and then everyone else can help you sort of like get to that place that's in your head. Like that's, you know, the ultimate uh, director level. Uh, and here it was just the complete opposite. It's just like every day making yourself totally vulnerable and just knowing that we shot entire scenes that didn't work. Um, we had to reimagine the movie when we were in post-production. We were, we were sort of like giving control to this group of people and, and it was like definitely, it was scary. Um, but then you started seeing these moments of truth that wouldn't have existed in any other way. You started people like Gordon was mentioning, people like really coming to themselves. Uh, the way that Tyrus, grew throughout the process of production and he like really just started embracing um like this new this new uh arm um so, so it, it, it's 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 the greatest creative experience that I've ever had um but yeah I would I would be lying if I said that it wasn't scary but just looking back and seeing all of them and seeing how far we've come and seeing how like I, I do feel like I'm a part of this community in some small part and like that, I don't know, I, I, I don't, I wouldn't really trade anything for it. Oh, there's major hearts going all around. <laughs> it's hearts all over. Well, we're almost out of time, but I have one final request, if y'all will indulge me, and that is if anybody feels comfortable um, finishing us off with a, a, a couple of words of poetry, like each or something like that, whoever, whoever would want to kind of step up, it's, yeah. Can I uh, jump in two seconds before we go into the beautiful part of this? Sure. I just feel like I have to do my job as a filmmaker and just say um, our movie's coming out in, in July uh, and we really need everyone's support. It's a super independent release uh, and all of, all of the poets on this screen and the ones that are not on this screen have been working really, really hard to get it out into the world. So if you like it, if you enjoyed it, please support it. Go watch it on opening weekend. Uh, follow us on Instagram where it's summertime movie 2021. I know that it sounds silly, but this is the kind of movie that really just gets to exist if people take the time to share it and take the time to go watch it, buy a ticket. So just wanted to say that uh, I am done with my PSA. Like, please uh, take it away with the, the real pretty stuff. All right. Thank you so much. Um, he wants to kick us off with a couple ends. <laughs> Gordon I will I was I would have raised my hand earlier but I was pulling up um a google doc <laughs> nice. um, I will read a couple um lines this is great and full circle because we have a new we also have a book coming out um that's promoting the film it's called odes to it's called odes to la summertime 
um I, I forget there's like a subtitle also to it um if someone can help me with like the actual just, title it, you just reverse it it's summertime odes to la gotcha so it's summertime odes to la and that's the new book that's coming out to promote the film and also it oh god it's such a wonderful piece of art because it also is kind of like a roadmap of experiences through la mm-hmm. how different people who come from different parts of LA experience LA in such vastly different ways. Um, I will read a couple of lines from the poem um, that is going to be in there that that I wrote, um, if that's cool. Yes, please. Okay. I never understood the magic of my hometown until I left it. Prodigal son, setting back into my horizon home. In my hometown, there is a taste of revolution in every noodle slurp, chopsticks in place of pitchforks, our existence a quiet rebellion, torch flames, sear carne asada, white gaze beheaded under the weight of a cleaver, ducks hung behind a glass, a glass pane. We still have storefronts wrapped in our native tongues, our unfiltered being a barrier to keep us uncontaminated, a slice of the motherland thin as silkworm's thread. And I think I'll leave it there. Just a tiny little snippet, you know? I don't want to give the whole thing, you know? We have to... (laughs) If y'all want to uh, hear the rest of the poem, we're also going to... I'm sure we're going to be touring with it at some point. And, uh, you know, buy the book. Uh, Google it. Summertime Odes to L.A., you know? This, this is the best uh, commercial for the book. It's perfect. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gordon, for reading that. Um, and thank you, Carlos, for reminding us where to watch, how to watch Summertime this summer. It's coming out. Where to follow you all. Um, Instagram, any, anywhere else that y'all are. If you all want to, if you all want to drop your uh, handles. <laughs> Well, it's me again. Um, so you can follow me at Winter Issues. That is all. <laughs> all right. I'm on Instagram at Paulina Dash AG. You can find me on Instagram at D Period Hour, and you can already pre-sale that book. Pre-sale order that book that we mentioned. Please do. We're so excited. And um, I am also on Instagram and it's learn and reflect, all one word, learn and reflect. Amazing. Well, Paulina, Carlos, Tyre, Tyrus, Mila, and Gordon, thank you so much all for joining us today. Um, I loved chatting with you. I had a fabulous time. Um, and thank you so, so, so much for bringing just this beautiful piece of art to all of us. Um, and thank yeah, you so much thank for you. having us. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you.